Hello and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be creating a high-end inspired piece of decor for less for my home. So if you like this kind of content, I would love it if you'd subscribe to my channel where I upload thrifting, decor, and DIY videos and family vlogs lately. And of course, you can always find me on Instagram at Nicole North Garden. Here we go. Hello you all, in today's video I am participating in a collaboration hosted monthly by Jamie from Border Bananas. Every month she invites a few people to play along with her and to create a look for less. It can be a piece of home decor or an outfit or a vignette, whatever the case would be. Um, this is something she's done for a long time on her channel and recently uh, started up again and I'm honored to be participating. Once you're done looking at my video, I would love it if if you'd go to my description box and there you'll find a playlist of all the other people playing along. There's going to be great inspirations for you, uh, especially while we all stay at home. We're all looking for some good ideas. So let's get into the video. A few months ago for my get it done challenge, I started redoing my master bathroom. I decided that instead of the normal farmhouse cottage look that I go for, I would create a boho inspired master bath. The boho elements that I'm trying to incorporate are wood tones and natural elements and metals. I want to start gathering items to go on the wall above my toilet in a large wall grouping. One of the first items I want to include is what I'm going to recreate in this Look for Less challenge. I saw this rusty metal wall planter online. It was initially listed at $48. When I looked yesterday, it was down to $33, but I'm still going to make it for a lot less. Just in the nick of time for this project, I received these acrylic paints from Arteza. It's a set of eight metallic paints. They're really nice. You get these big tubes of paint and there are several metallic shades included so that you have a lot of options for creating projects. For my project, the idea here is to to do a paint effect that looks like rust. So in order to do that, I decided to use the space gray that they gave me as well as a bronze color and a gold. And then later on, I also incorporated some of the lighter silver. If you're interested in any of the Arteza products you see me use, I will provide affiliate links in the description box below. I get a small commission if you purchase anything using those links. Now, in addition to the Arteza products, I also pulled some things from my stash I have this sour cream lid as my paint plate and some old bristly brushes. The stiffer the bristles, the better for this paint technique. They're great for adding texture. Also pulled out my tight bond glue, but you could use E6000 or wood glue. And then I got this piece of wood from a yard sale last year. And this old box with eggs painted on it got water damage. I received this from my mother-in-law and I decided this would be the perfect size and shape for what I'm trying to accomplish with this DIY. Prior to filming, I did wipe both pieces that I would be painting down very well with a damp cloth. So I went ahead and prepared my paint palette. I got some of the space gray on there and then the other two colors as well. And then I also pulled some paints from my stash. I wanted to have some flat brown and some flat black. So this is just an apple barrel paint and I think that's a craft paint. I don't remember the brand. Basically for this technique, you're going to use almost a dry brush technique. So you can see I get some of the black and some of the space gray onto my brush. And then I'm just pouncing the brush up and down. I'm not really brushing, I'm just pouncing, pouncing. And so you're gonna do this for areas of the blacks and grays. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the same brush for the areas of the rusts and the brown colors. And you kind of, you don't wanna overwork the areas. You just wanna, but cause you don't want all the paint colors blending in together. You want them to stay visible and separate. So I did the same pouncing technique on the entire board. You could see that I incorporated some of the light silver and then once it was kind of drying, I came back with a very dry brush and a little bit more of the rust color. And I just kind of brushed over some of the pounced areas just to make them look 
less pounced, just more real, more realistic. Then I used the same technique on the little box, pouncing in areas of blacks and grays and then areas of browns and rusts. And again, brushing it all once it was almost dry, just to give it that smoother texture. Like you don't wanna completely smooth out all the texture, but you also don't want it to just look like you pounced it with a paintbrush. And so here's what my rusty board looked like once I was done painting it. I was really pleased with how the rust technique turned out. I think it looks a lot like the inspiration piece. Then I took my tight bond glue and I gave it a good coat um, to the little box and I attached that in the bottom left corner of the board just like the inspiration piece. And the tight bond glue does need a bit of time to dry. It's similar to Aileen's tacky glue in that way. So I let it sit for a little while. And then once it was dry or mostly dry, I put some styrofoam into the little planter box. This is not my ideal uh, foam to use for this project. I'd prefer the green foam from the Dollar Tree, but I don't have any. So I had to use what I had. And then I grabbed some succulents from my stash as well. I keep a lot of faux succulents on hand because I like to use them in my decor. Some of these came from the Dollar Tree, some came from Michael's as well. And I should add that off camera, I also added some command strips to the back of the board because there was no other way to hang it. Command Velcro strips are great for hanging things, especially if you don't wanna make holes in your walls. So I did that, but I don't have a shot of that. And here's what it looked like after I added the faux succulents. Really was liking how it was looking, but you could still kind of see the white styrofoam. So the next morning I added in some Spanish moss just to cover up the styrofoam. And here's what my completed project looks like. I think this is gonna be great in my boho styled bathroom. So here's mine on the left and the inspiration piece on the right. I think it looks reasonably similar. Theirs is bigger, but that's just the size board that I happen to have on hand since I couldn't go out to get anything. And that's all that I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I made this look for less. I'd love it if you'd go watch the other videos on the playlist. And until my next video, thanks for watching. Take care.